set time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to seek. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. Glory, honor, and power, power for the spirit, all things and for thy pleasure. May There is no holy as the holy as the Lord. None besides thee, besides thee, is of your awesomeness. We thank you for amazing privilege to be in your presence. We are calling upon you to open heavens and release anointing unto us and release your spirit unto us that at the end we be conformed with you and with that one thing which is needful in this life. Open our eyes to the realities of one thing that is needful, O Lord. We hand over the entire environment into your hands. And we are praying and asking, mighty Father, that you will control all activities within and without for the glory of your name, for the blessing of your children. Thank you, Father, because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. We are taking our reading in Luke chapter 10. We are reading verse 41 and verse 42. Praise the Lord. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. 
and Mary has chosen that that good part which shall not be taken away from her this is the topic as well that we are going to look at one thing is needed for if you look at the conversion brochure you look at the features you will see in the features it says the word of god and here we discover that the life we are living today we are competing with so many things this is church age and we have so many things to contend with we have so many values attached to the life we are living today we have so many wants and needs challenging man's priorities and because of these values that differ from one area to the other we are pursuing divergent uh, values and we lost the grip of only one thing that is needed for and that's why before we pray we need to open our eyes and discover that one thing that is needed for looking at the entire expanse of the world and looking at the entire global population and looking at our race and looking at our continents and looking at countries and tribes this one thing that is needed for a court across race a court across countries a court across religion only that one thing is needed for and that one thing that is needed for the global world seem to be in dark of that one thing that is needed for the lord has brought us into the holy land and our primary purpose of being to the holy land has to be defined our objectives our aims of being to the holy land it has to be defined so that we will not run from pillar to post and end up getting nothing we have our primary goals of being to the holy land and that thing is the word of god that thing is to conform ourselves to the word to open ourselves to the word of the lord to get ourselves integrated with the world to be familiar with the word of god to hold the word tenaciously and carry the word all alone at the time we are into the holy land to prepare ourselves to be doers of the world and so we need to understand this primary aim which is to hear to obey and practicalize the word of god and stand only on the word because the word is what the lord himself introduced to mankind as being made for and so you will now be favorably disposed to know that which the lord has recommended to man the recommendation is final and binding when the lord spoke it becomes a non-negotiable matter for mankind when the lord gives a sentence it becomes binding on his children 
and we are so fortunate enough that the Lord made a choice for us we are so fortunate enough that the Lord acquainted us with that which has to do with eternity and so we have a slogan in this conversion and that slogan is one thing is needed for us we came with so many thoughts we came with so many activities we carried so many appointments into the camp and many have apportioned their priorities to them but the lord has addressed us one thing that is needful in this conversion is to sit down quietly and listen to the word and word alone. One thing that is important is to listen to the word and word alone. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 before we go into prayer let's look at ecclesiastes chapter 12. verse 13. let hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of a man. The conclusion of the whole matters in this conversion is this. The whole duty of every conversion participant is to sit down quietly and listen to the word of God carefully. That is the whole duty of man that is the conclusion of the whole matter and we thank God that this conversion will be conversion with difference I'm giving you a story if you call it a testimony a testimony it is if you call it expo expo it is but you will assess it by yourself just in last two weeks the coordinators had a meeting with international director and as he was taking us in the pages of the scriptures we all became apprehensive of our status in christianity and it was done on me that this kind of message since i was born again i've never had it in life the conceptions I was parading about the assumptions I was moving about were about it it was in that meeting it was done on me I was moving with a runner's conception all these years of my Christianity and I believe our father is prepared and with other men of God to liberate us from the shackles of ignorance and get us neck deep into the world for the world is the primary thing once again the whole duty of a man in this conversion is to sit down and absorb the world the whole duty of every woman here is to sit down quietly and be listen intelligently to the word of God as the Lord will be dishing it out for us. And therefore, there must be do and don't for us to harness this which the Lord is going to do. We must observe some rules in the camp and in the tent of meeting for us to listen intelligently to the world. Number one, you are going to remove all masses of uh, weapon of masses of destruction, which is likely to be your telephone and other electronic device. So if you are in the tent of meeting 
and you are not on a specific assignment for the progress of the conversion why not to switch off your phone because the phone it distorts and distracts the attention of con conversion participants when the word will be coming out like this coming out like this and people will be listening to the word and the lord will be bringing healing and anointing unto his people all of a sudden you begin to hear some phones ringing simultaneously as the word is proceeding from the altar it will cause distraction for all the people around there and so in this camp we must do that which is needful switch off your handset and pocket it and allow it to be there so that we have this solemn business with the lord number two detach yourself from unconducive or unhealthy environment to enable you listen intelligently to the world wherever you are make sure you are comfortable and don't allow anything to stand between you and the world as the world will be coming out and then number three make sure you never turn the camp into business arena into market square some people will come with their market and they will not concentrate to hear the word neither will they allow other conversion participants to hear the word buying and selling will take all over their time and they end up the conversion making money but losing their soul and therefore we have to guide against it so that as the world will come with fire and I'm so happy that the man of God and our daddy in the Lord, the Lord has anointed them. That when they stand here and as they are speaking, miracle will be taking over in all the facets of the tent of meeting. As they open their mouth, the Lord will confirm their words with signs and wonders following. But if you are not composed, the Lord will come where you are and will pass over you. And we don't want any man to leave this confession without getting your desired miracle. And therefore, do away with the buying and selling when it is not necessary. When you are not on assignment for to facilitate the progress and the comfort of the participants of this conversion, put a stop to your personal business in the camp. And then when the Lord will start his business with us, you will never be left behind. Very soon we are going to pray. And now let this slogan be in our mouth. Whether you are there in the hostel, after getting the word, don't be a nuisance for other people by turning the resting period into discussion period. And this is very common among women. When the program is over, go into your personal business and let not your personal business encroach into the comfort of the other people. It is even a sin. And we don't want that in a conversion and solemn conversion like this. When we listen to the word, let us meditate, let us cogitate, let us remain on the word, and let us not turn into meditation period to become our of business discussion or be establishing business contact with one another. It is a solemn period, and the Lord has prepared to do so many things. Just in outline ma ma manner, just in outline form, take this. For you will know why the word 
is one thing that is necessary remember you don't appeal the judgment of supreme court you don't appeal judgment made by god himself the lord the creator of heavens and the earth the master of all circumstances the all-knowing god and the supreme commander of all the impossibilities the master has made a choice for us by acquainting us the privileged ones to things that are needful and we are going to look at in outline form why listen to the word of god alone is necessary why it is needful to listen to the word of the lord take it very quick and we will go to look at the supermarket in heaven that god will release anointing that god will release healing that god will release uh, miracles upon us number one we, the, the word is needful because the word acquaints you to the way the truth and the life so you cannot enjoy life you cannot know life when you have not known the world when you are not integrated with the world you are just a car moving without break you are just in the church practicing religion for christ is the way the truth and the life it is the world you see that in john chapter 14 verse 6 in john 14 verse 6 number two for cleansing and purification it is only the word of god that purifies man that cleanses man that makes the man righteous and makes man holy it is only the word you can see why it is needful for us to listen to the word as we are in this holy ground you see it in psalm 119 verse 9 we are with us shall a young man cleanse his way we are with us shall a young man stop committing uh, homosexualism bestiality incestuous acts we are will a young woman stop acquire power to stop living in fornication living in adultery where will a businessman acquire power to stop telling lies in the business living in profiteering and living in adulteration it can never be found anywhere except in the word of god and in john chapter 17 verse 17 sanctification which is the second work of grace is made easy and possible through the word only the word of god number three for fruit bearing we cannot bear fruit as children of god if the word is not in us it is only the word of god that causes fruit bearing in the life of believers if the word is not in you you will be a fruitless tree that has no value for the owner the word is beautiful because we must bear fruit and that's why the conversion by the perfect will of god has been turned to catch and arrest our mind and got us integrated and we remain inseparable with the word of the lord in john chapter 15 verse 15 you cannot be a fruit you cannot be righteous you cannot receive anything from the lord you can never know anything of eternity except the word 
is embedded in you. Number five. Number four. For God to dwell in us. There is no way God can find a boat. God cannot live in us if the world is not already in us because that world is God himself. And every Christian that is destitute of the world is a Christian. It's never a person that will experience the abode, the living of the Lord in his heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 6. The Bible says, don't you know you are the temple of the almighty God. When the word rests in your heart, the Lord will live permanently in our hearts. Number five, for protection from sin. No human being can resist pressure of sin. No human being, except the person is abiding on the word. Except the word of God is living in you, you cannot resist sin. That's why people go to church, they go to church, they feel it in sin. They go to church, they have a boyfriend and girlfriend. They live in the church and they used to exchange evil text messages. The reason is because the word is not in them and so they cannot resist the deception and the pressure from Satan to commit sin. And so we must, we must integrate the world. And this is the best arena and opportunity provided for you and me. For we do not know what will happen next. Whether this conversion will be the last conversion we will enjoy before the master comes. And so, make good of this opportunity. Listen to the word in the hostel. Listen to the word. If any woman is talking in the hostel, open your mouth and say, One thing is needful. Remind your, your partner. Remind your neighbor. If you are out to them, the word is going on. They are engaging you on a discussion concerning your state, concerning your family. Say, excuse me, one thing is one thing is let it become our slogan in the kitchen if argument is to arrive what we do now let's remember the slogan the what word one thing is beautiful if we are out there in the book stand let us use the word one thing is needful if we are here we are not listening to the word we are not conformed to the word we are not integrated to the word we are dispersing our energy in futility and finally to exert exact authority over your circumstances you cannot control your condition you cannot control developments around you if the word of God is not in you. The word of God is the authority we have. The word of God is the propelling force in the life of a Christian. The word of God is the dynamo, the dynamite that when we use, Lucifer will crumble wherever he is. It is through this word we revoke the sentence and judgment passed on our forefathers and also passed upon us. And so, one thing is needed for if we will revoke the judgment of the enemy, if we will revoke the judgment of the evil ones against us, if we will revoke every evil decision against us, the propelling force, the word, the only word, the word of God is a sancro sant for us to revoke every evil judgment. And so in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, he said, I've given you the key. And whatever thing you lose on earth, and whatever thing you bind on earth, thank God for a conversion like this. 
we are going to pray. We must use this authority. Whatever problem we brought into the conversion, as we use the key, it will be all over. Begin to say all over to your problems. All over to your problems. We are going to exert the authority. We are going to use the word. And that is why you must listen to the word of God. I am so happy. You cannot see it out there as we are seeing it here. I am praying for some decades in the Lord. Our Father and Lord gave me a message. I never had it since I was born. And this confession, something is going to happen. I said something is going to happen. Are you looking for miracle? Are you looking for deliverance? Listen intelligently to the word. It is the word that breaks the yoke and makes the miracle possible. And finally, before we pray, for the purpose of obtaining answer to our prayer. Do you still remember the topic? One thing is needed for. And we are looking at why that one thing is needed for. And this is the final point for now. To obtain answer for our prayers. The Lord said, if you have will, my word abide in you, my word. He said what? If my word doesn't turn, you know we are rushing because of time for the purpose of obtaining answer to our prayer. John chapter 15, verse 7. If my word abide in you and you abide in me, whatsoever you ask shall be given unto you. Is it like that in your Bible? So if the word of God abides in you, whatever you demand of the Lord, whether healing, whether deliverance, whether provision, whether elevation in the place of work, the Lord said, I will do it for you. And so you have seen the reason why we must sit down quietly and stop every effort and stop every distractor whether your nearest neighbor is advancing himself or herself to be a distractor use the word one thing is needful those that are working in the hostel organizing and working for their welfare don't overpower them need to those engaging themselves in discussion and say one thing is needful we must listen to the word of God we are not here for fun day. we are not here to celebrate Christmas we are not here to exchange business contact we are not here to see other things only the world because the master said that is the thing that is needful and uh, it will be a splash of mud. It will be a disrespect. It will be a challenge to the integrity of the Almighty God. After the Lord has introduced to you that this is what is needed for in the life we are living today, then you go about to do contrary. It is only the world that will take us out of this world. It is only the world that will make us a champion before the champions. I need to announce this to you. Before we live here, God do his word. will anoint every one of us and will become the David of this dispensation. The David in our states. And as we march our, into our states, every colloid, the sword of the world, we will choose to slay and slice them in Jesus' name. 
how many people that want to be the David to slay the Goliath in his state? Raise up your hand. I want to be one. I said I want to be one. I said I want to be one. One thing is needed for. One thing is needed for. We are going to go to God in prayer. We are going. We are going to go to God in prayer. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. We will pray in the world. Let us rise and begin to pray. Prayer is the key. Prayer. Prayer. Jesus.
have total authority in my life. And I will slay all my colloids. Mighty Jesus. Your Lord is A and Amen. Father, I need your anointing. Oh Lord, anointing to slay my colloid. Anointing to destroy my colloid. Anointing to destroy my colloid. Anointing to destroy my colloid. Mighty Father. Mighty Father. Mighty Father. Let your name be glorified. Oh God, anoint me to destroy the colloid in my state. All the colloids in my state, oh Lord. Mighty Father. Mighty Father. Mighty Father. Mighty Father. Mighty Father. Oh God, do it for the glory of your name. Do it for the glory of your name. Anoint me to be my temple in my own warfare and see all the glory of your name. the Lord to make you a fruit, a tree bearing fruit. As the Lord to make you a fruitful vine. As the Lord to dwell in you so that you will bear the necessary fruit. Mighty Father, we thank you because of who you are. Oh Lord, make me that tree that is bearing fruit a hundredfold. Mighty Father, oh Lord, I want to bear fruit. I want to bear fruit. Cause me to bear fruit, mighty Father. Cause me to bear fruit, mighty Father. Cause me to bear fruit, oh Lord. Mighty Father, mighty Father, mighty Father, cause me to be that tree that bears fruit all the year long. Mighty Father, mighty Father, cause me to bear fruit, O Lord, fruit of righteousness. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, do it for the glory of your name. Do it for the glory of your name, mighty Jesus, mighty Jesus. Mighty Jesus, make us free to be our truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Ask the Lord to open your spiritual eyes to see the realities of the Word of God. Ask the Lord to open your spiritual intellect for you to know the truth of the world. Satan cannot deceive us. Satan cannot deceive us. For the word of God is a and amen. Mighty Father, open my eyes to the realities of the world. Open my eyes to the realities of the world. Mighty Jesus, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes to stand firm on the word of God. Mighty Jesus, mighty Jesus, open my eyes to remain on the truth of the word of God. Mighty Father, Mighty Father, Mighty Father, Mighty Father, Oh Lord, oh Lord, open my spiritual eyes and open our eyes in this conversion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Ask the Lord to sanctify you. In John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus prayed for your sanctification. He said, O oh Lord, sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is the truth. As the Lord to sanctify you, you cannot go back 
total sanctification. You cannot go back without the circumcision of heart. Mighty Father, I call upon you this day. I call upon you this day. Oh God, sanctification make it easy. Sanctification make it easy. Mighty Father, sanctify me through your word. Sanctify me through your word. Sanctify me through your word. Oh Lord, sanctify me through your word. Mighty Jesus. Mighty Jesus. Mighty Jesus. Mighty Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ask the Lord to deliver you from the hands of these defilers and the hands of these polluters. These religious leaders that pollute and defile the children of God. Ask the Lord to preserve your guilty activities. Mighty Father, we honor you. We call upon you from heaven. Preserve us, O Lord, against these defilers. Against these polluters. Mighty Father. Mighty Jesus. Let your name be glorified. Preserve us against them. Preserve us against the polluters. Protect us against the defilers. They can't defile us no more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. It is the word that set us free. It is the word that set us free. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It is the word that set me free. It is the word that set me free, oh my. It is the word that set me free. It is the word that set me free. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more, Jesus. I want to know you more and more. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I want I want to know you more and more. We are going to convert it into prayer. We will ask the Lord, liberate me from every error. Liberate me from every half truth. Really deliver me from every word in this. And cause me to know you more and more. Like Peter, like John the Apostles. Mighty Father, I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. Deliver me from error. 
Deliver me from half truth. Deliver me from the false prophets. Deliver me from the false teachers. Mighty Jesus. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Jesus. Jesus. I want to know you more and more. I want to be obedient to the word. Liberate me from every half truth. Deliver me from every error. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Ask the Lord to exalt himself in your life. Oh Lord, exalt yourself in my life and let my life be a testimony for the world to see you. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Mighty Jesus, exalt your yourself in my life, O oh Lord. Exalt yourself, O oh Lord, in the life of these your people. Mighty Jesus, thou the great I am, thou the King of Kings. O oh Lord, exalt yourself in my life. I will be a testimony for the world. Mighty Father, mighty Father, exalt yourself, exalt yourself, exalt yourself in this convention, in this ministry, in my life and family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thou the immortal God. Thou the great I am. In Jesus' name we pray. Tell the Lord never to pass you by in this conversion. Oh Lord, pass me not by. Give me my desired miracle. Give me my desired pleasure. Mighty Father, pass me not by, O oh Lord. Pass me not by, O oh Lord. Mighty Jesus, thou the great I am. Pass me not by. Pass me not by, by here. Thou Jesus, thou Jesus Christ, give me my desired miracle. Give me my desired miracle. O oh Lord. Give me your desired miracle. Give me your desired miracle. And finally, ask the Lord to make your miracle permanent. To make your deliverance permanent. To make your blessings permanent. Call upon the name of the Lord. Mighty Father, Mighty Father, let your miracle be permanent. Words cannot take it away from us. Words cannot snatch us away from it. Mighty Jesus, mighty Jesus, let your miracle be permanent. Let your miracle be permanent. Thank you, precious Lord. Receive an adoration, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Congratulations and jubilation. Jesus has conquered. That's why I'm happy, happy. Yes. Begin to congratulate one another. Jesus has conquered. That's why I'm happy. Be happy, congratulations, 
जो भी लो Jesus ne mu pre Our supreme commander in heaven we adore you for your supremacy for your uniqueness control over our lives over this holy camp and over our conversion we thank you for the miracle we are ready to receive for we know it must surely come to pass thank you for giving solutions to our problems thank you for healing us almighty god thank you for liberating us from half truth and errors let your name be glorified o lord let our miracles be permanent in jesus name we pray amen, amen. who will give them this message how will they get this message who will god send who is ready to say here yeah, i am send me most of the sanctuaries are actually mortuaries And the pastors who ought to be the servants of God are mortuary attendants. Sending souls in their millions into hell. And they are comfortable. Raising daily false doctrines. Raising altars of idolatry on God's pulpit. We are going to pray that every puppet of idolatry that Satan has raised in these churches to drag souls to hell, pull them down in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray. Pull them down. But a sinner will do what? How can they repent? When the men of God have told them, God is not bothered. When the men of God are the ones telling them the things that they will do to provoke the hunger of God. And God is angry with his church. The Lord told the servant, they have drawn my Holy Spirit away from their midst by their ways of life, by their idolatry. Just last weekend, one of our pastors called me on phone in the morning. He said, do you know what this pastor has done again? I said, what did he do? He told all his church members to come with coal. And he asked them to be combing their hair in the house of God and told them they should not use that comb anyhow. That with this comb, 
there shall be breakthroughs. With this call, all open doors shall be open. With this call, before the end of this year, you will give your testimony of God. And in that congregation, we are not talking about 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 souls. In their numbers, including the vice presidents, combing his head and holding their combs, they are idols. You will talk to God. Enough is enough. Do you want to pray? Yes. Do you want them delivered? Yes. Say, Father, deliver your church. Yes. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for the deliverance of the church. For the liberation of the church. For the deliverance of the church. something he achieved in the first world that he was able to gather the multitudes of this earth only eight were saved and when he provoked God to anger God destroyed the whole earth he said he pained God to his heart and that he was happy Then Satan said, his target again is this. That he knows that God has ended his own course to be in hell. He knows he cannot change that. But, he wants to achieve another great feat. He wants to acquire nothing less than 95% of the source of the earth to be with him in hell. He said, then it will pain God again to his heart. And that is his victory. Would that be you? No. You will turn to that brother or sister beside you and pray for that sister. Pray for that brother beside you. Say, every power that wants to drag you to hell, I destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. sister the power that wants to go to her i destroy by the fire of the ghost i scatter by the fire of the ghost you will not go to her you shall not go to her you will not be there it is not your portion 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 hell is not your place hell is not your place you will not go there you shall not be there. Satan has lost you. Satan has lost you. You are lost forever. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our loving Father, we thank you because we are delivered. We are not going to be among the 95%. That Satan has proposed in his heart 
that you will drag to reign with him in hell. We appreciate you. You have spoken your word to us this morning that one thing is needful. And that we shall pursue throughout this conference in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as we go into the second message, which is the reasons why many are yet to be born again, I pray, Lord, you will open the ears of your children. Amen. They will understand. They will see themselves. And they shall be made a better Christian. Amen. Thank you for answer prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. As we invite our brother, Pastor Manasseh, to deliver the next message, the reasons why many are not yet born again. Sorry, there is... message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production, and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4318. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world, condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you. I love you. I believe. Oh, uh-huh. 